H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Hi guys, let's come to another video of H2K Infosys. Thanks for watching it. So in this particular video, we are actually going to see certain examples of a single dimensional array. So we have seen what is a single dimensional array and what is the syntax of single dimensional array. <clears throat> in this particular session, we are going to see how to basically create single dimensional array and see some practical examples out of it. And um, for this particularly, I will use the Eclipse ID. Let us open the Eclipse ID. So in this particular Eclipse ID, I have create a new project called as session 13. Click on the next button after choosing the Java project and call this project as session 13 out here. And click on next and click finish. I don't want to change the perspective of the theme of this particular Eclipse ID. In this session 13, I'm going to create a package which is called as single dimensional package to just suggest the name so that we can remember what we are trying to learn. And inside this particular package, we're going to create a class file called as single dimensional All right, call the main method because we want to get the result in the console. Expand the coding pane by clicking on the tab button out here. Double click on that. So let's create certain practical example of single dimensional array out here. So the first example will be an array uh, an array of element size of 3. Now if we have a single dimensional array and in single dimensional array we have the column number fixed as at 1 and the row and the row only uh, differs. So if it has, uh, has an element size of 3 that means this single dimensional array will have will have three rows and one column and the column number is fixed always in a single dimensional array a single dimensional array will only have one column so based on that let's say i create an integer type array so for creating an integer type array we have to use uh, the int keyword integer let's say a variable a is integer type array and single it is a single dimensional array we will have a single pair of square brackets equal to the keyword new to define an array as an object then int and define the element size as 3. We only have a single pair of square brackets for a single dimensional array because their column is fixed at 1. So the, the only pair, pair of square bracket that is present out here defines the L row rather. So this is nothing but row whose size is is 3 now if we define the element size the element size will be 3 rows multiplied by the column is fixed at 1 so 1 column and that is how it is equal to 3 and 3 is nothing but the element size this is how we define it for a single dimensional array. The next aspect of the array is that we have defined the syntax of the array like this. That means it's an integer array whose element size is 3. Now we have to define the 
data is inside the array that means we have to put data is inside this array now if the element size is 3 that means this array can hold three datas that means three cells and the three cells will have datas inside it and the number of columns is will remain at 1 okay so what we need to do is basically we have to define the datas in this array So how do we define the data? We know that the this array is defined by the variable a. So we know if the row size is 3, the index number of the row will start at 0 and end at 2. So let's remember one particular thing that in a single dimensional array, the row size is 3. This defines the row size. And this 3 into 1, which is nothing but the column size, so 3 into 1 column is equal to 3 that is the element size that is how we define the element size in a single dimensional array now if the row size is 3 the index number of the row will start at 0 and end at 2 so we have to remember one particular thing index number is always one number less than the row size or the column size now in single dimensional array we don't have to define exclusively the column size because by default we have to understand that the column size remains at 1 for a single dimensional array. So exclusively do we don't have to define what is the column size for a single dimensional array. As far as the index number for the row is concerned because in single dimension array we only define the row size and this 3 denotes nothing but the row size. So if the row size is 3 that means the index number will start at 0 and end at 2 and that precisely means that index number is always one number less than the row size or the column size. So let's now define the data in this particular array. Now we understand that the variable a defines an integer array. So a at index number 0. So what will you put at index number 0? Now let's, let's remember that it is an integer type of array. So as we know that arrays are homogeneous, can only have homogeneous data. So if we have defined an array as an integer type of array, it can only hold integer type data. So the data at index number 0 that means this is nothing but row number 1. So this data let's say is equal to 10. Similarly the data at index number 1 this is nothing but your row number 2 and data at index number 2 which is nothing but your row number 3 is equal to 30. So it precisely means that this is row number 1 This is your column number 1, sorry, row number 2 and this is your row number 3. Row number 1 is depicted by index number 0, row number 2 is depicted by index number 1 and row number 3 is depicted by index number 2. This is how we define the data in this array. Now, next is that if the element size we need to find out through the computer programming there is a way through that now by default if you look at this particular array we will be able to say that the element size is 3 because 3 rows column is fixed at 1 so 3 into 1 is 3 that is nothing but the element size out here but how does the computer shows us the element size or the element size sometimes in arrays are also called as length so sometimes the element size is also called as the length of the array. The element size is also called as the length of the array. Now for example we need to find out what is the element size of the above array. So let's say to find out the length or element size of the above array. So to find out the length of the element size we have to use the dot length method of the array. So the array is defined by the variable a that means the variable a is of integer type. So we need to define 
if we want to find out the element length or element size of the length of the array we have to write down CISO pull out the variable a which is nothing but the integer array dot length there's a method called length this length method gives us the element size of the length of the array how do we get that we have to just use the variable a which is nothing but an integer type array dot immediately all the methods of the array will come and one of the methods is your length method this length method can be used to get the element size or the length of the array and i can write down the element size of the array is concatenate this with a dot length so this becomes the string part the string format is concatenated with the variable a dot the length method so if i save the class file and run it i will get the length or the element size of the area this let's see what is the element size the element size is 3 so if we change let's say if i comment this that means there are only two rows so in if i comment this i have to change the number of rows out here in the syntax of the array so this should be also two and if i save this class file and i want to get the result that is nothing but the length of the array i'll get the result as uh, Since the number of rows is 2, so 2 into 1, this is the element size. This gives the length of the array. <laughs> and rather in, in single dimensional array, when we actually want to get the length of the array, it is nothing but the row size, typically speaking, because the column number remains fixed at 1. Now, let's say I want to get the, uh, I will change this back to 3 rows. Now let's say I want to get the data at row number 1 to get data at row number 1. How do I get it? I just have to use a CISO statement. So I just write, can write down the data at row 1 is this will be concatenated with the variable A in the index number so data at row number one so what is the index for row number one the index for row number one is zero so a of zero so that will give me the data at the index number zero which is nothing but row number one <coughs> so if i save this class file and run it i'll get the data at row number one is 10 and that is what i have stored out here similarly I want to get the data at row number 3. So what I will do is that I will use a differentiator first to differentiate the answers in the console. So let's say I want to get the data at row number 3. So what is the syntax, what is the index number of row number 3? The index number of row number 3 will be 2. Please remember, index is always one number less than the row size or the column size. So the row number is 2, that means the index for row number 2 will be, or row number 3 for example. So the index for row number 3 will be 2. So what I have to write down, the data at row number 3 will be A at index number because row number 3 is defined by the index number 2 out here. So the result should be 30 for this. If I save the class file and run it, I'll get the result at row number 3 which is equal to 30. Sometimes it is needed that I need to get the data at one go. That means I need to get the data for all the rows. So for that what I need to do, I'll just write down to get data from all rows. This might be a situation. How do I get it? For this, we have to use a for loop. Now, the for loop start with the 
uh, initial value now let's say the index number okay now if you have three rows okay the index number will start at 0 and end at 2 correct so the initial value is nothing but the initial value of the for loop has to be defined so let us define the index by an integer value so index number 0 or 1 or 2 will be divided <coughs> excuse me by a integer data type so let's define the initial value of the index so integer x or integer i defines nothing but the index number and the initial index number always starts with 0 then we know also know that index number should be one number less than the length of the array okay or index number is always one number less than the element size of the array now the element size of this particular array is 3 so the index number will be 0 until 2 okay that means the index number is one number less than the length of the array so i should be the condition has to be defined now i should be less than a dot length and this length method gives us the nothing but the element size of the array so i should be less than the length that means the value of i should be one should be less than the length the length is equal to three so i should be starting with zero and ending at two for example and last part is your incrementation that means incrementation of the index number so i plus plus after that i can define the CISO statement i can define uh, the variable a and the index number defined with the integer variable i so what is going to happen when i is equal to 0 the condition needs to be checked is 0 less than 3 because a dot length is what a dot length is nothing but the element size so this will give me the element size which is equal to 3 so is 0 less than 3 condition becomes true so what will be printed out a of 0 and the value of a of 0 is equal to 10 that is what i have kept then what is going to happen for the second looping to happen first the incrementation of the index number will happen so i will become from 0 to 1 is 1 less than 3 condition becomes true so what will be printed out a of 1 so what is the value of a of 1 a value of a at index number 1 is 20 so this will be printed out after that for the third looping to happen there will be incrementation of index number i which will become now 2 so is 2 less than 3 condition again becomes true so the compiler will move inside the for loop so what will be printed out a of 2 that means the value of the variable a at index number 2 which is equal to 30 this will be printed out okay then again the incrementation of i will happen that is index number so i will become 4 is 4 less than 3 condition become false the compiler gets out of the for loop so this will print out all the data inside the array so if i save the class file and run it i'll get the data in the array that is 10 20 30 in this particular format so if you look at this particular console result it looks like one column with three rows okay so this is a typical example of an array which is having element size of 3 and this is the integer type of array similarly i'll create example 2 and this will be an element size an array of element size let's say 2 and i'll call this as a uh, I'll create a string array. So a string array has to be defined with the keyword string and I can define the square bracket before the variable name. Here I have defined the square bracket after the variable name. I can define the square bracket before the variable name also. So let's say str. Okay. Equal to new keyword followed by the string keyword for a string and we then we have to define the element size 
the element size let's say is equal to 2 and define give give a terminator sign so that means the above array or this array this array is of string type having element size as 2 now element size is nothing but the length of the array now as we have seen earlier and we have understood this earlier a single dimensional array has only one column for a single dimensional array we don't have to define the column size it is understood that a single dimensional array will have only have one column okay now after we define the syntax of this array we will define the data is inside this array So what are the data in this array? It is having element size of 2. That means this 2 actually depicts the row size and the column size is equal to 1. That means it has 1 column and 2 rows. So what do you have to define? The data in this particular string array. How do you define it? With the string variable. So what is the data at index number 0? Because the row size, now what is the row size? Row size is 2. So obviously if the row size is 2, the index number will start at 0 and end at 1. Remember one particular thing, index number is always one number less than the row size and the column size. And in single dimensional array, we only define the row size. So that is why the index number will start at 0 and end at 1 for this particular example. So str is the variable. So what is the data? at index number 0 that means what is the data that you have to put in row number 1 remember this is a string array so you have to define a string data let's say i define sam so this is nothing but the data at index number 0 that means data at row number 1 which is the first name for example then what is the data at index number 2? Now this can only hold two data because the element size or rather the row size is equal to 2 for a single dimensional array. So str that means data at index number 1 which is nothing but row number 2. So if the data at index number 1 is defined that means it is nothing but row number 2. So the data at index number 2 is nothing but let's say the last name and let's say it is defined as Sam Mendes okay this is nothing but the data at row number 2 which is nothing but your last name okay now this is how we define the data for this particular string array since the string array has the element size of 2 or the length of this array is 2 or we can say the row size is equal to 2 and the column size is equal to 1. So 2 into 1 is equal to 2, which is nothing but the element size. So it can only hold two datas. Now I want to get the length of this particular array. So <coughs> length of the array or the element size of the string array, whatever we can call it as. Okay. Now please remember this as a note. length in a single dimensional array is equal to the row size specifically for single dimensional array when we define the length of the single dimensional array it is nothing but the row size typically because in single dimensional array we do, don't define the column size by default it is known that the column size is equal to 1 so row into column is equal to element size now we, in single dimensional array we only depict the row size so definitely if the length of the array is defined for a single dimensional array it is nothing but the row size that is why i have given this particular note 
okay now let's say i want to get the length of this array so what i need to do sys out i can write down the length of the string array is concatenate this with and what is the variable str dot length the length method is going to give us the element size or rather the row size for a single dimensional array see if i save this class file and run it i'll get the row size at 2 that is what is defined out here and let me bifurcate example 1 by from example 2 by using a differentiator and the differentiator is nothing but a star sign okay now let's say i want to get the data at index number or also let's say the at row number 2 so data at row number 2 so what i need to do is sys out and i can write down data at row number 2 is concatenate this with str dot no, str at index number 1 because if you want to get the data at row number 2 it will have index number 1 so this will give me the data of mendes that is the last name so if i save the class file before i run it i will use a differentiator again the differentiator will be copied from here if i run it i'll get the data as mendes okay now let's say i want to get all the data from this array to get all data from the string array so what we have to do we have to use a for loop again and let's say we define the index number with the integer j so j defines a variable which defines the index number so index number will start at 0 so integer j is nothing but it defines the in index number will start at 0 and index number should be one number less than the element size so what is the row size at this point of time this is nothing but the index number for the row please remember that okay this is nothing but the index number of the row the number of rows is equal to 2 so the dot length method will give us the row size so the element size should be one number in so, sorry the index number should be one number less than the row size so how do i define the condition for that j should be less than str dot length we see we have seen that the length method had given us the value of 2 right so that means 0 should be less than 2 and then the incrementation of the row size depicted by the variable j so j plus plus and then we use a CISO statement and the variable str defined by the index number represented by the variable j so what is going to happen the value of j is 0 0 is less than 2 condition becomes true so str of 0 the str of 0 will hold sam that will be printed out after that for the second looping to happen the index number will have to be incremented so j will become from 0 to 1 1 is less than 2 condition becomes true the str of 1 str of 1 is bendis that will be printed out after that again the value of j will be incremented the index number that is the index number of the row will be incremented so j will become 2 is 2 less than 2 the condition becomes false the compiler terminates the for loop and what is the result that we will get we will get the result that is nothing but all the data of the array so i'll use a differentiator to differentiate the answers save the class file and run it i am getting all the data from that particular string array now i have also specified that an array should be of homo should only take homogeneous data so if i have defined this array as a string type it can take only string type of data if i try to put on a data which is of integer type it will show us a syntax error 
type mismatch cannot convert from integer to string. Now I have defined this variable str as a string array. That means it can only hold data which is of string type. I am putting a data which is of integer type. That is why this particular syntax error is coming. Similarly, if I put a double format data, the same result is going to come. Cannot convert from double to string. So that means uh, what I am trying to say is that if I am defining a variable, uh, an array which is of string type, it can only hold data which should be of string type. If you try to put any other data type of value or any other va different data type value, that will show you a syntax error by the compiler. If this variable is of integer array, it can only hold data which is of integer type. Since I have defined this particular example as a string array, it can only hold data which is of string type. So I will change it back to string. So that's about it for the single dimension array. And uh, thanks very much for watching this particular video. Please refer to it in case of any questions.